Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a gorgeous linen. Nice and crisp, good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my skirt front. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And then a few notches here. So I have notches to mark my pockets, my gathering, my fold lines for my front edge and for my hem. So I have a little bit of prep work to do here. So I'm firstly going to press in that front edge. So folding in underneath my one centimeter seam allowance and pressing and then folding again at the notch you just seen me snip and pressing. I'll do that the whole way up. And then secondly, I'm going to press up my hem. So first of all, folding in underneath my one centimeter seam allowance. And then folding on my notch and pressing. I'll finish that off camera. So now that I have those lovely creased edges, I can stitch down that centre front. So starting at the bottom of the skirt with a back stitch, trying to hug that crease edge the whole way up, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, and back stitching to finish. So that's how to press, happy with that. So I'll leave the hem and come back to it a little bit later on. So the next thing to do is to add my pockets. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece and a notch at each side to mark my facing edge. And off camera I ran one of the sides and that bottom edge through the overlocker. And here just adding a little bit of support to that top edge. So I'm using some cotton interfacing and pressing it into place. So now to form my facing I want to press in underneath my seam allowance. And then I'm going to fold at my notches and pin that side edge. Ready to stitch, back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish. So I just need to turn everything right side out and give that a good press. And now that that's done I can press in underneath those finished edges. So folding at my seam allowance, starting with that bottom edge and finishing with the side edge. So now the last thing to do before I can add this to my skirt is to stitch down the facing. So just like I did on the centre front before, I'm lining my needle up right on the edge of that crease using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching to start and finish. So that's the prep work required on my pocket, now to add it to my skirt. So lining the top and bottom with those notches you seen me clip earlier and pinning into place. So I'm first of all going to create a little triangle with my stitches just on that inner edge. So starting at the bottom of the facing, sewing at an angle up to the top edge, little pivot there, couple of stitches across the top and then down the side. And this is just going to help strengthen that top edge and also give a nice finish. So continuing right along the perimeter of my pocket with that edge stitch. 
So now this piece is ready to be joined to my back at the side seam. So on to the back. I'm using the same pattern piece as I used for the front skirt. I've just folded in that centre front edge and my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have notches to mark the centre at the fold line and the same notches for the hem. And off camera I've prepped my hem in exactly the same way as I did the front. So I folded in underneath my seam allowance, folded up my notches and pressed. And now that that's done, I can join my front and back together at the side seam. Lining up my edges, lining up the crease lines of my hem. My fabric is right sides together. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I just need to tidy up that edge on the overlocker and press, which you can see here. And now that that's done, I'm ready to stitch down my hem. So using that same edge stitch again, lining my needle up as close to the crease edge as I can get, using that same longer stitch length as before, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I've given that a good press, happy with that. And now to finish the prep work on the skirt, I just need to gather down the waist. So I'm using my gathering foot. I've increased my stitch length to the longest on my machine and I've increased my tension to the highest on my machine. And I'm starting at my notch on the front, stitching within my seam allowance right the whole way around to the centre back. I'm then going to pull and cut my threads and start again right next to it at the centre back. And this will just allow me to adjust the gathers evenly if I need to. Finishing at my notch on the front. So to make it a bit easier to join this gathered edge to my waist piece, I've pressed out that top edge. Happy with that? So that's my skirt all prepped, so I'm going to set it aside now to work on the bodice. This is my back, my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch to mark my shoulder, a notch to mark my gathering, and a notch top and bottom of the fold line. So the first thing to do here is to face the neckline. So my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch to mark the centre and I want to add a little bit of support to this piece but I still want it to be soft so I'm using that same interfacing as I used before just this time I've cut it on the bias and now lining up my notches lining up my top edges my fabric is right sides together and stitching here at my one centimetre seam allowance back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I've pressed out my seam and now this piece is ready to be joined to my front at the shoulder. So on to the front I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. Notches to mark my facing top and bottom my centre notch, my gathering notches, and lastly my shoulder notch. And off camera I've ran that same interfacing right along my facing. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join my front to my back at the shoulder. My fabric is right sides together. Lining up my notches, lining up my edges, and ready to stitch. So starting at the neck, I've got a very subtle little curve here, so I'm taking this nice and gently, a little pivot where the neck joins the shoulder, and continuing. Finishing with a back stitch, 
So to help my curve lie nice and smooth, I'll just snip out that excess fabric where the neck joins the shoulder. I'll finish my edge on the overlocker and press out my seam. And this is what I get. Super happy with this. So now to finish off that facing. So just like I did on the centre front before, I want to press in underneath by my 1cm seam allowance. Then fold again at my notches and press. The whole way up the centre front around the back neck and back down the other side. And stitching here right along the crease line just like I've been doing throughout, using that little bit of a longer stitch length again, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's at a good press. And I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So now to close up the side seams. So laying my front over my back, my fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and stitching at my one centimetre seam allowance. And I'm taking this nice and gently around that curve and back stitching to finish. So I just need to finish that straight edge on the overlocker and then I'll snip right around that curve. I've given it a press. So now to finish the sleeve edge and I'm going to do this in exactly the same way as I have been doing throughout. So I'm folding in my one centimetre seam allowance, pressing into place. Folding again and pressing. So this is going to form a gorgeous little cuff piece. And stitching here, starting at the underarm seam. Little pivot there at the edge. And continuing to edge stitch the whole way around. Finishing with a back stitch. So that's at a press, and this is how it looks. Very happy with this. So now to give it a little bit of shape to my bodice. So I'm going to run those same gathering stitches as I did on the skirt before, between my notches on the front and on the back. Starting with the front, sewing within my seam allowance, pulling my threads at the end in case I need to make adjustments, and on to the back, same thing again, starting at one notch, stitching within my seam allowance, and pulling my threads to finish. So I've pressed out my gathers at that top edge. And now my bodice is ready to be joined to my waist. So my waist consists of three pieces. The back, which is this one. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch to mark the centre, top and bottom. And a couple of notches at the side. And I'll cut this piece out twice. Now for my second waist piece. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. I have corresponding notches at the side, a centre notch top and bottom and another notch at the top that will help me join my bodice in the right place. So now to join this piece to my back at the side. So matching up my notches and before stitching this one I'm just going to join my other side as well. So this is the other side of my front 
same notches here and two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And just like before, lining up my notches and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. Starting with a back stitch, sewing right up to my notch, back stitching again, leaving myself a little gap for my tie to go through, back stitching at the second notch, and continuing to the seam edge, finishing with a back stitch. So that's that done. And for the other side, sewing at my 1cm seam allowance straight across. So I'll press those seams open, so that's my waist piece assembled. Now just to add the ties. I have four layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, a little notch at one end in the centre, and I'm lining up that notch with the notch on my waist piece on both sides and ready to stitch. Sewing at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start and finish. So those seams have had a good press and of course I've repeated that entire process twice. So now to join them to my bodice. And I'm going to do this in two stages. So I'm laying one of my waist pieces right side up, laying my bodice over the top right sides together, matching my notches, side seams and front edge and ready to stitch. Stitching here within my seam allowance, just tacking this into place for now. I'll sew this on permanently when I put the second waist piece on in a second. So that's my first piece all tacked into place. Now to add the second. So I'm laying it over the top of my bodice, right side of waist piece to wrong side of bodice, lining up my notches, lining up my side seams and edges. And I'm going to stitch here from the edge of the tie on one side, the whole way around the tie, across the entire waist and right around the tie on the other side. This time stitching at my 1cm seam allowance. And I'm doing this in two stages because I find I can get it a lot more accurate and a lot neater as I don't have to worry about the layers of fabric shifting as I'm sewing. So that's my two waist pieces all joined with my bodice sandwiched in between. So I just need to snip my curves and corners, turn everything right side out and press, which you can see here. Super happy with this, everything's neatly tucked away as it should be. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my skirt. So again, I'm going to do this in two stages. So I'm laying my bodice over the top, wrong side of bodice to wrong side of skirt. I'm lining up my edges, notches and side seams. And as it turns out, 
not very well, but you'll see that in a second. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching to start and to finish. So I've pressed my raw edges up into the waist and then I folded my one centimeter seam allowance in underneath and here I'm just laying that nice crease edge over the top of the seam line you've just seen me sew and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length. Sewing right along that crease edge and I sewed this whole thing into place. It was beautifully neat. I loved how it looked and realised I hadn't lined up my notches on my skirt as I should have. So the edge of the bodice front and the edge of the skirt didn't match. So you can sort of see it here. So I was absolutely devastated. So I had to take an entire break from this project and I came back to it the next day, unpicked my skirt from my waist piece and rejoined it in the correct position. So this is how it looks. So I have my bodice and skirt nicely tucked into my waist piece. I've hand stitched my little opening for my tie closed and with that, this little dress is complete. So I have that gorgeous built up neckline all nicely faced. I've got my shaping provided by the gathers, my sleeves all tucked away in underneath nice and neat, my waist piece with its tie, those huge pockets, that self faced front edge, my gathers at the waist and then that gorgeous hem. And from the back, my waist shaping again provided by the gathers. And this is how it looks on. So those of you following along over on Instagram will have seen the inspiration for this. And I think I've got it pretty much spot on. There's a couple of slight differences in the way they finish the facings on the cuff and around the centre front. Also the depth of the hem, I think mine's a bit bigger, but I'm super happy with how this has turned out. I absolutely love that bodice shape. It's one of my favorites. I love the waist piece and how it nips everything in. One thing I'm not mad keen on is this gathered waist skirt. It just doesn't really suit my body shape, but because I love this dress so much, I will 100% make another one of these with perhaps an A-line skirt and maybe a couple of little gathers, but I'm looking forward to having a little play around with this. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do, and I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks!